The Lord of the Rings, Part One, by J. R. R. Tolkien. When Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would shortly be celebrating his eleventy-first birthday with a party of special magnificence. There was much talk and excitement in Hobbiton. Bilbo was very rich and very peculiar, and had been the wonder of the Shire for sixty years, ever since his remarkable disappearance and unexpected return. The riches he had brought back from his travels had now become a local legend. There were some that shook their heads and thought this was too much of a good thing. It seemed unfair that anyone should possess apparently perpetual youth as well as reputedly inexhaustible wealth. Twill have to be paid for, they said. Trouble will come of it. But so far, trouble had not come, and most people were willing to forgive him his oddities and his good fortune. He had many devoted admirers, but no close friends until some of his younger cousins began to grow up. The eldest of these, and Bilbo's favorite, was young Frodo Baggins. When Bilbo was ninety-nine, he adopted Frodo as his heir and brought him to live at Bag End. And now it was understood that something quite exceptional was being planned for that autumn. Tongues began to wag in Hobbiton and Bywater, and no one had a more attentive audience than old Ham Gamgee, known as the Gaffer. I always said he's a very nice, well-spoken, gentle hobbit, is Mr. Bilbo, as I've always said. And Mr. Frodo's very much like Mr. Bilbo, and in moan looks. After all, his father was a Baggins. Yes. You see, Mr. Drogo Baggins, he married poor Miss Brimula Brandybuck. She was our Mr. Bilbo's first cousin on the mother's side. Oh, oh yes, yes. Well, the youngest of old Took's daughters. Well, you see, they were drowned, and poor Mr. Frodo was only a child. And Mr. Bilbo never did a kinder deed than when he brought back the lad to live among decent folk. No, it was a nasty knock for those Sackville Bagginses. Yes, they thought they were going to get back in. They'll never see the inside of Bag End now. Oh no! A tidy bit of money tucked away up there. Oh, I hear yes. that. All the top of your hill is full of tunnels packed with chests of gold and silver and jewels. By what I've heard. Well, then you heard more than I can speak to. Oh, oh yes. Mr. Bilbo's free with his money, but I know of no tunnel making. I saw Mr. Bilbo when he came back. He had me helping him, and my lad Sam will know more about it. He's in and out of bag and listens to all Mr. Bilbo's tales. There's elves and dragons. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Gabbages and potatoes are better for me and you. <laughs> Don't go getting mixed up in the business of your betters, or you'll land in trouble too big for you, I says. Yeah, oh, like oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, but they do things proper at bag end all. The same. Our Sam says everyone's going to be invited oh, to the party. Hey, oh, oh yes. 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 And, and there's to be there's to be presents, Mark. Oh, uh, uh, presents for all. Oh, uh, uh, this very I month see. this is. This oh, very month. That very month was September, as fine as you could ask. A day or two later, a rumor. Probably started by the knowledgeable Sam, was spread that there were going to be fireworks such as had not been seen in the Shire for nigh on a century. An odd-looking wagon laden with odd-looking packages rolled into Hobbiton one evening and toiled up the hill to Bag End. It was driven by dwarves with long beards and deep hoods. Then a cart came in through Bywater from the direction of the Brandywine Bridge. An old man was driving it, all alone. He wore a tall, pointed blue hat, a long gray cloak, and a silver scarf. 
He had a long white beard and bushy eyebrows, and small hobbit children ran after the cart right up the hill. It had a cargo of fireworks. The old man was Gandalf the wizard. His real business was far more difficult and dangerous, but the Shire folk knew nothing about it. And when he had finished unloading, Bilbo gave a few pennies away, and they disappeared inside. How bright your garden looks! Yes, I'm very fond of it, but I think I need a holiday. Oh, you you mean to go on with your plan, then? I do. I made up my mind months ago, and I haven't changed it. I mean to enjoy myself and have my little joke. Uh, who will laugh, I wonder? We shall see. Yes. Carts rolled up the hill. Invitations began pouring out. Tents began to go up. There was a large pavilion with a tree inside it and lanterns on its branches. Cooks arrived and excitement rose to its height. Then Thursday, September 22nd, actually dawned. The sun got up, flags were unfurled, and the fun began. The presents were real dwarf make and unusually good. There were songs, dances, music, games, and food and drink. The fireworks were by Gandalf. Brought, designed, and made by him. There were special effects, dwarf candles, elf fountains, thunderclaps. They were all superb. There were rockets like birds and green trees with trunks of dark smoke. There were fountains of butterflies. And then a great smoke went up. The lights went out. The smoke was shaped like a mountain and a red golden dragon whizzed three times over the heads of the crowd, turned a somersault, and burst on Bywater with a deafening explosion. That is the signal for supper. The guests were not disappointed. They had a very pleasant feast. The purchase of provisions fell to almost nothing throughout the district in the ensuing week. After the feast, more or less, came the speech. <laughs> My dear people! My dear Bagginses and Buffins, my dear Grubs, Chubs and Brandy Bucks, I am 11 today. I hope you are all enjoying yourselves as much as I am. <laughs> I shall not keep you long. I have called you all together for a purpose. Indeed, for three purposes. First, to tell you that I am immensely fond of you all and that 11 years is too short a time to live among such excellent and admirable hobbits. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. Uh, secondly, to celebrate my birthday, I should say our birthday, for it is, of course, also the birthday of my heir and nephew, Frodo. <laughs> He comes of age and into his inheritance today. Together we score 144. Thirdly and finally, I wish to make an announcement. I regret to announce that, though, as I said, 11 years is far too short a time to spend among you, this is the end. I am going, I am leaving, now... Goodbye. Bilbo stepped down from his chair under the illuminated tree and vanished. There was a blinding flash of light and when they opened their eyes, Bilbo was nowhere to be seen. 144 flabbergasted hobbits began to talk at once. Frodo was the only one present who had said nothing. He sat silent beside Bilbo's empty chair. 
He felt deeply troubled. He realized suddenly that he loved the old hobbit dearly. He gave orders for more wine to be served, drained his own glass silently to the health of Bilbo, and slipped out of the pavilion. As for Bilbo Baggins, he had been fingering his magic golden ring, which he had kept secret for so many years. After he slipped it on his finger, he was never seen by any hobbit in Hobbiton again.